Log, 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 talk radio. This thing right here yeah, yeah, is for my people in the streets. <laughs> yes, 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 today. Log, radio. Welcome to another episode of RSG One Mic. Uh, we're in the building. Um, we are brought to you by RSG Media Group, and uh, we are ready to roll. If you need anything uh, RSG related, Real Sports Guys related, go to realsportsguys.com. Uh, we're about to get into it. Before I get into it, though, I got to bring in the rest of the team. Uh, we got my man. We call him, you know, he's kind of the man that holds it down in the post. Uh, when we need those buckets, we go right to him. Uh, my man, Hank Davis, how you doing today, man? I'm doing well, man. I feel blessed and highly favored. You know, we're all here able to, Amen. you know, try to light, light, lighten the load a little bit for, for our folk out there. Um, but uh, I can't complain. I won't complain, fellas. And it's good to see all y'all's faces. Amen. Amen. All right. Sometimes, sometimes he he'll, he can be the enforcer for us. We call him the hammer. He'll he'll put the hammer on you. What's up, C Hamp? How you doing? I'm like I uh, repeat what uh, Hank said. Blessed and highly favored. Well, you know, job. Praise praise the Lord. Um, glad to see my brothers here. Um, a lot of us, uh, either the police brutality, this virus, are here now. So um, I, I'll just piggyback what Hank said. Uh, he's just giving real talk about what, what matters, uh, even though we're going we to break it down uh, one mic. But um, thank you, brothers, for uh, coming together. So, you know. All right. All right. And he's the energy. He's the young and in the building. He, you know, keeps us relevant. What's up, Darnell Kirkland, Jr.? I'm all right, man. Uh, just taking it day by day. Taking it day by day. I understand. I understand that. Uh, well, in our opening mic, for now, uh, known as Power to the People segment, uh, yeah, it was quite a week, y'all. Um, and, uh, you know, I was uh, just there were so many movie moments, but uh, to hear, you know, Doc Rivers speak, you know, uh, at the press conference, it just – uh, it, it resonate resonated in so many different ways for me, and um, and then from there things just continue to to unfold. Um, you know, uh, the Milwaukee Bucks, uh, you know, decided that uh, they were not going to hit the floor, and then before you know it, uh, um, NBA shut down again, and uh, the Brewers then said that they were not going to play, and you started happening the next day. The NHL, you know, things came to a halt this week. Um, our WNBA sisters were just incredible in terms of the way in which they expressed and the way that they organized. You know, I just, it feels like we keep having this conversation, but, you know, I just wanted to check in. It's also check in for us uh, as well. You know, uh, Hank, as you, you saw this week unfold, you know, what, what was, what was your emotions, man? I know you and I just kind of started talking a little bit before, but this was just, you know, incredible to watch some of the things that happened this week. Uh, um, what were your, your emotions? You know, Listening to Doc Rivers, you know, it, 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 it brought me back to, if you guys remember, several weeks ago, in my drop the mic, I asked one simple question, and that question was why. You know, why do you got to keep killing us? What do we do? And Doc Rivers basically asked the same question. He said, why is it that we keep loving a country that don't love us back? Mm. You know, and he broke broke it down. He's you know saying same things, some of the same things that I said. As far as we help build this country, you know, we've taken care of of of, of children that wasn't our own. You know, we brought delicacies, we brought culture, as a people, and yet for some reason there is an inherent hatred with the black man that is right now what we saw this week that is so clearly defined. The delineation can no longer be argued that a man with his back turned gets seven bullets to his back, and yet a young a white boy who has killed two people walks right past the police, and they just give him a how you doing or give him some water, whatever. It's, the outrage knows no boundaries. And, you know, I don't know how much more peaceful we can become, and I'm not trying to incite anything, but even when you try to peacefully protest, you have people going out here and, you know, salting that protest with white supremacists or whatever other group you want to have to incite rioting, 
to make it look like this thing is worse than what it is. And yet, you know, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's falling on, to me, it looks like it's falling on deaf ears and blind eyes. And that's always dangerous. Because as I said before, and I'm going to keep saying it, you're only going to be able to punch somebody in the arm so many times in the same spot, so many times. And this is a different generation that at some point you're going to wage the war that you've been asking for. And you have to be, you know, and, and it goes back to that old adage, you be careful what you ask for because you damn well might get it. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it, and obviously, I, you know, I, I would say that, you know, um, you know, NBA, pl NBA players in a bubble felt your sentiments and were tired and were like, you know, we can't, we can't, uh, we're not going to do this. We're not going to move any further. <laughs> we, we, we're going to put everything to a halt. Uh, Darnell, I know you, you're, you know, you, 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 you are tapped in and uh, into a lot of different things. You know, what, what, what were your feelings that you saw some of this stuff unfold again? As, as it almost is like uh, Groundhog's Day. Well, where do you start? I mean, when you talk about things that happened this week, you have a whole bunch of different incidences all over the world. You had the Jacob Blake thing, of course. You had the uh, you had the um, the man. Uh, I forgot his last, his name. I think it's Kyle Rittenhouse. That's his name. Yeah, Kyle Rittenhouse, the killer. Yeah. Yeah, the Murray. killer at, that, that was at the um, protest. You had that happen. You had the death of um, of Chadwick Boseman yesterday. You had the death of Lou Olson. You had the death of um, Cliff, Cliff Robinson. Robinson man. One of my friends, his, his father passed away yesterday. I mean, there's a lot of things going on. So, like, it's just like an avalanche of stuff right now. But um, You didn't even mention the hurricane. <laughs> right, man. So, my first thought about – I would just start with the Jacob Blake thing. The first thought is, um, it's it's hard to say because like, I don't want to say I'm desensitized, but at the same time, we've seen this over and over and over again. It's just like, man, you know, it's a it's just a horrible thing. Just but when is it gonna stop? And it just it just put you right back in the mood we were in um, before with uh, George Floyd. And before that, Ahmaud Aubrey, just the same thing keeps going on. Turner, yeah. We're just in the cycle, like you said, Groundhog's Day. That's that was my that was my first thought. You know, I, I, I you know, Carl, you are the the son of a of a preacher. Yep. So sometimes yeah. you got to call on faith. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I know you had to dig in everything you had to do as somebody who is a Chicago and through and through. When you heard Brian Urlacher come out with the stuff he came out with, I'm not surprised. He's a white. He's a white boy. Um, I mean, the average white boy is a Trump supporter. So yeah. why are people surprised? And again, I'm gonna say something unpopular. I'm desensitized by it. Um, mm -hmm. What happened this week? Because again, we talked about this. The theme about it. Where is the policy change? Where is the judicial change? All the things we talk about, I mean, we see Doc Rivers. I mean, I bet you probably voted Republican several times, knowing these people. So, again, now everyone's outraged because they see their mortality. You know, you hear about uh, Keyshawn Johnson talking about he can't walk his dog. Like, we know that, bro. So, I mean, the bottom line is that all the stuff and all the emotion and the, and the day stoppage, you know, symbolism. Where does that leave us? Where is the policy change? Where is the judicial change? Use this energy to get the vote out. I mean, the perfect example is like, uh, that, that I'm jumping ahead, but I will give an example. Um, I respect, uh, I, I just texted him today, can't leave. Brother Mandela Barnes, our lieutenant governor, mm -hmm. doing a great job. But all the, the policy agenda is going to be stopped cold because our legislature is Republican. And the reason why I became Republican was because in 2010, uh, instead of understanding how important that election was, a lot of us sat out and let the Republicans control the legislature, then control the maps. And then basically, there are very few uh, competitive districts out here. And so what the Governor Zebras, who I you know, work for and support, 
is a chance it's going to be stopped cold and even sent by Republicans. So you look at Breonna Taylor, perfect example of politics. You have Daniel Cameron, who probably is going to be the next governor of Kentucky, said a brother in name only, who was Mitch McConnell's attorney and now attorney general, and he has stopped that cold because he understands the politics of that. And the reason why is because people didn't come out. Yet we had elect, we, had, we elected a Democratic governor of Kentucky, but we didn't like uh, we didn't get that, that that Uncle Tom out of there. So the bottom line is that we need to t- put this energy into a policy agenda. I, I, I've been saying this I don't know how many times that we can uh, the written house of the world, they're running amok because of the fact that of what's at the top right now, what they're enforcing. Uh, they're, they're, they're undermining our voting rights, literally and figuratively. Well, they gutted the Voting Rights Act, the Supreme Court. And that's because we lost elections. I mean, I don't get political here, but we talk about a pure progressive standpoint that we have a right-wing Supreme Court that is against our people and is going to vote against our people. And so the main thing about, again, the energy is raw, and again, you love it, but after that, what's next? And yeah, I understand you talk about the policy agenda, but the policy agenda is dead on arrival. Let's be real about it. It's dead on arrival in Wisconsin. We got, we got, we got, they're trying to do well, do a, do a veto proof legislature where they basically can pass anything over the governor. That's, that's the agenda. And we need to put our energy into organizing people to get out the vote, protect the vote. Uh, not get, I'll just say it, Biden's got the biggest vote protection program in electoral history because he understands what they're going to do on election day. And so, all this energy, the day stoppage. I mean, they really were, were real about it. They would stop the season. But they're not going to stop the season because of the money. So, again, the, the bottom line is that I don't want to come off and people are going to say, he's Uncle Tom. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm just telling you real talk. That's why you have me on the, on the show. I'm a PK. You're right. And I'll just tell you, my father, my father told me about all the things about being a black man in America growing up and raised me right as far as when you get stopped in the police Keep your hands down. Don't reach for it. Don't reach for your glove department. You end up in a casket. Don't talk back to the. To, in fact, I'll just I'll break it down to you. My girlfriend took me to Baraboo to hike for two days. You know, my birthday was uh, about three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I got stopped two different times. Both once, both days I was there. I got stopped by the police. I'm driving a Prius, uh, a, a silvery Prius. Okay. I'm, I'm, I wasn't yes. suited up. I wasn't, I wasn't suited up, okay? I wasn't suited up. That was the problem. Cause my pops always told me that suit up. You won't get stopped by. I should have been in a suit, but my baby wanted me to be. I was in casual clothes. I was, I was trying to have a vacation. I can't even do that. They stopped me, and they were like, what are you doing here in Baraboo? Well, you're from Madison. Like I, was, like, I was buying drugs, or, and my girl was, I was, I was a, pro, a pimp, and my girl was a prostitute, and she was like, but, you know, I didn't get angry about it. I just... I know it's being black in America. I mean, I hate to. I mean, I hate to resign to the fact that, but it's just real talk. And, and a lot of these people, like Darnell's uh, generation, they're they're just angry about it. My dad broke it down. Mom broke it down too. That's being black in America. And until we change this systemically, until we change these judges who have, or Trump put two hundred judges. These cats are going to be making law for, or interpreting law, they only call it for 40 years. Okay? That's that's the stakes of this election right now. And so, the bottom line is that, you know, again, we can have stoppages, we can have all stuff, and again, I'm not putting down, there was real emotion in it, but what do we do after the emotion? And, 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 I, and I would say that we're moving in that direction. I think the players in terms of... I think, I think, I think, again, I think... Bro, let me, we've let been me say what there I, several let me, times. You, you've, been, you've been there. But I think part of what the players uh, have done, at least in this time, I think in the conversations with the Board of Governors, is getting to the point that I think you're talking about, having real policy change, leveraging those billionaires to be part of the conversation. But it's not going to happen overnight. And I, I will say this, so we, we're not going to stick on this point too long. It's going to be important to do uh, if if nobody get out and vote in November. Preach, not preach. So, so that, that part, that part, that's the Preach. easy part to do. Yeah. Like the, the easy part is to get out. And, and, and no, it's not the easy part because they're trying to stop us from voting. Yeah, and that's, to, a, to... that's the thing that stuck out to me. Um, they said only twenty percent of the NBA players are registered to vote, and they have yeah, this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Kaepernick, Kaepernick, Kaepernick didn't vote. Yep. 
And then you gonna talk about you gonna have yeah, but, but, but hold, 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 listen, hold on. We're not gonna, we're not gonna spend a lot of time on this. It don't take that long to register to vote. I, I agree, and that's why it's, 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 that's it take, why it's take, raggedy. It, 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 it take as long as it takes to go to Taco Bell fast food. I agree, and that's why it's yeah. a travesty. Oh. These same people yeah, who are yeah, yeah, up yeah. here who are up here talking about uh, change, they're not even registered to vote. I vote every election. But I'm I'm gonna say that my point is that's the easy thing to do. All you gotta do is execute it. So. That, no, that, people are trying to stop it, D. Wills. They're trying, yeah, to, but, they're trying but, to damage but, the post office. They're trying to stop the Trump just filed I, lawsuits I to stop that. people from. Well, okay. if, if you really care about, put your mask on and go to your polling place. I just did it. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, 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 I do. Yeah, I do it totally. I vote like I said do what you, before. Do what you got. Do what you got. Doing that do. though, D. Wills. Huh? Yeah, but I say I'm not. I'm going to be optimistic because I'm pushing it. I'm not going to sit here and say we're not. Optimist, I'm optimistic. Job, if, 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 if Biden wins, if, if, if Biden loses, I ain't optimistic. <clears throat> but but I'm, I'm saying it. this. But everybody in this group, you got you got ten people you can influence. Yeah, I got many people. I influence people every day. Man. I talk people so, about the game so every I'm day. Saying is, I'm saying we're not going to spend a lot more point on this. What I'm going to say is this: we got it in front of us. If we don't execute it, then nobody else to blame. True, I agree. And the reason, why, and that, the, say, the reason why, the reason why, the reason why we got we got Trump right now is because our people didn't come out in 2016. Yeah, they that, come out in Wisconsin. They come out in Detroit. They didn't come out in Philly. Yeah. They didn't come out in Miami. So, yeah, That's why we got Trump. So everybody knows they need to start to come out. So we need to figure it out. All right, we got plenty of time to figure out. We can if people can figure out uh, all the stuff we've been figured out and, 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 and navigate it in this time of this pandemic. We can figure this out. All right, we're gonna get there to. Uh, Woo! This is hard to pivot. It's hard to pivot on this one because this is our NFL kind of preview. We're going to do this at a high level. Like, we spent a lot of time last year kind of working through each division. You know, I got my panel here. I got my expert RSG NFL panel right here uh, of folks who, you know, we're going to use this as a time for us to step away because we all need deep in, these, in, in what we see are important issues. But this is going to be our opportunity for a little bit here to kind of uh, get into – uh, uh, a little bit of NFL talk. And so, uh, you know, given COVID and everything else, we had to tighten it up. We had, we're not going to have our mask on, but we're going to tighten this up a little bit. Uh, and we're not going to do it over several weeks. We're going to do it. Uh, we're going to do something here uh, tonight that we can kind of just work through a little bit. So we're going to work through the divisions. I'm a, I'm a, I want y'all to give me a sense of, you know, who y'all think are going to be the divisional winners in each conference. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit through that. Um, and then we'll get to who we think uh, will represent in the conference championships. And then obviously then uh, who's going to be the Super Bowl matchups. And then after that, we're going to say, you know, is there a player that you think is going to be a breakout player, you know, across the NFL? We did this each division last year, but just someone you think can be a breakout player. Um, and then one team that in the early season predictions, people don't have them set up one way, but y'all think they're going to over deliver. Y'all think they're going to outpace. Y'all think they're going to, you know, uh, they might be predicted to be a seven and nine team, but y'all think they're going to be, they, y'all think they're going to be a 10 win team. Y'all think they're going to be 11 to win team, you know, uh, to get a sense like that. So we're going to work our way uh, uh, a little bit through this in and in, in, in think about the divisional winner. So, uh, I'll start with I'll start with Darnell because I know Darnell's probably thought through a little bit of this before. Let's start with the NFC. Who do you who do you see as is kind of the divisional winners in the NFC that as you start to look at the divisions in the NFC, who do you think are going to be those divisional winners and why? So the uh, different divisions. So you got NFC North. Let's start with the <laughs> the division um, in our backyard. I'm going with um, Green Bay. Mm. I, I, I'm like in the direction um, – they didn't really have to do too much, I, I, in my opinion. Because they have to get a receiver? You know, Come on, man. They have to, right. Hey, they have – you got Chicago over there. Who's going to lose? We're going to lose. Who's going to lose? Right. You got, right. you got right. lose. Who's going to lose? Hammer, hammer. So, Let him roll this stuff out and we'll come back. All right, go ahead, Darno. Sorry. Right, yeah, you got Chicago who – I don't think – who burned me last year. I, I was very high on Chicago last year. And mm. Mr. Trubisky proved me wrong. <laughs> so, you know what they say, fool me once, same on me. Fool me 
can't get fooled again. Like, that's what Corey Bush said. So, so, I like that. And the Lions, like you said, Groundhog Day. It's the same old stuff every year. We might go eight and eight, and that's a great year. So, um, that just leaves Minnesota and Green Bay. And when you have a quarterback in Aaron Rodgers, you got a defense that really stepped up last year. You have guys like Zadarius Smith, Preston Smith. You have um, Jair Alexander. You have, um, their defense really stepped up. They're, um, they're building on the running game as well with Aaron Jones. They got the guy from Boston College. Um, I think his name is last name Williams. Oh, Dylan, point. bro. Dylan, Dylan, Dylan. Oh, Quinn. Dylan. Williams was, yeah. Andre Williams was like five or six years ago. They're, they're, they're both big bruising backs, so that um yeah. kind of got stuck in my head. But, um, yeah, I think they're going to be pretty formid- formidable. They're building on that um kind of 40, 49ers um blueprint, but they have, their quarterback is way better than Jimmy Garoppolo. So, I got them for NFC North. And you want me to pivot to the NFC East? Yeah, why don't you going pivot? with – yeah, go ahead with the go to the NFC East. The Dallas Cowboys. Oh. Yeah, I know you don't. You might not like. You know, might I not like the Cowboy pick. I like the Cowboy they pick. Got, um, they, they loaded. Oh, they're, shoot! We talk about time. nine defensive. Oh, well, they, yeah, they they picked up Everson Griffin. They got Everson Griffin. Yeah, yeah. Why was he Martin available? Ford. He ain't that. And then no. Uh, and then they let McCoy. McCoy got hurt too. He's out. So. Hey, but let him get his stuff out. He yeah, be quiet. Be quiet. Let's 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 do this. I'll, 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 back I'll, I'll be quiet. All right. All right the defensive ahead. backs is going to be their weakness. The cornerbacks, they let <laughs> Byron Jones go. So that is going to be their weakness. But um, I'm really liking what I'm seeing with Washington. I think they're building something, but I, I don't think mm-hmm. they're going to be there just yet. So I'm going with Dallas. And who, who else we got? NFC West. You got the West and the South. Yeah. Oh yeah. NFC West. I'm going with um, San Francisco. They um they double down. <laughs> they double down. They got they have their game plan and they're sticking to it. They picked up Trent Williams. I've seen a little bit of their training camp stuff, and he's looking like a beast. <laughs> and also in the draft, they picked up um, Javon Kinlaw from um, South Carolina. He's another monster on the inside. They got him to pair him with Nick Bosa. They're going to be a problem to deal with. But don't sleep on the Seattle Seahawks. Um, they picked up Jamal Adams. He can fill that um, – the Cam Chancellor role that used to be there. He's not well, – he's no longer with them, but he can fill that role. You also have um, Quandre Diggs. They picked up from Detroit last year. He can – they can kind of – they're both versatile enough where they can switch between, like, the, playing like a free safety and a strong safety kind of thing. So their defense is going to be – Good, and you know they love to run the rock with uh, Chris Carson, and you have a quarterback with Russell Wilson that can. Um, he's the definition of a, of a pure f- field general, and NFC South. Of course, I'm going with who that nation with his Saints. I don't even know if I really have to say this. They they are when you say when you talk about loaded. Their offense. You have can't guard Mike Michael Thomas. You have Alvin Kamara. You have. Drew Brees, you have a decent – you have a really good offensive line with um, Teron uh, Armstead and Ryan Ramchick. I mean, they that offense alone, man, they're going to put up a lot of – put a lot of points up in that dome. And without the um, – you know, without fans in the stands, <laughs> the noise might not is, – is going to be a lot less of an issue. So that offense, I think, is going to be – pretty tough to deal with all right so darnell has green bay dallas the 49ers and the saints uh as a division, right yeah as a divisional winner now now i'll give you now hammer now y'all got we give it a chance we got the teams out here, here here's an opportunity for your reaction i'll give you a few minutes to react or or, or hank where we start where we start all right yeah re, we'll react to what it, what you're hearing green bay's not gonna win the, the division. Uh, Minnesota is definitely because they got Ngakwe today uh, from Jacksonville. That's a huge pickup. Um, that's a huge pickup. And so uh, Dalvin Cook's in that contract year. He's going to bring it. And so you got Kubiak going to be running the offense. Much better than Fansky. So I like Minnesota in that division. Green Bay doesn't have any weapons on the receiving core. And also they didn't, they didn't address Funches uh, opted out. That was the only pickup they got as far as receiver goes. Uh, your Michigan guy. 
Um, and they didn't draft any receivers, which is which is unconscionable. I mean, you talk to any Packer fan, what are they doing? I mean, Dylan's a nice back. I mean, nice, but I mean, he doesn't catch the ball well. He's not. He's not. I mean, the backs in in that West Coast offense should be able to catch the ball. Aaron Jones uh, is has been injury prone, so um, I'm, not, I'm not feeling Green Bay as far as uh, I think. I think again, they might be a wild card or something, but they're not going to do that. As far as um, he's right about who that who that going to do it, but um, don't sleep on Tom Brady, man. Again, like I said, don't sleep on Tom Brady. Uh, as far as it goes, uh, Drew, Drew Brees right, has right, found right, a lot right. of ways to lose games. All right, so you released a little bit. I'll, I'll let you do that. Uh, 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 Hank, your, your little reaction to the list right here without divulging your list too much uh, because I'm going to give you a chance to roll your list out here in a minute. I, I have a hard time with Green Bay simply for the same things that, that Hammer says. They didn't they, – they really – is incorrigible what they did with not getting Aaron Rodgers some weapons. Thank okay, you, they bro. did not – they did not get him any wide receiver. And then on, on top of that, they went and drafted another quarterback. And see, you got to understand, you got to keep your superstar diva quarterback happy. And, and he can say whatever he wants to in the media, but I know he's not happy about that. Okay, because it looks to anybody else who's not living in uh, Green Bay is that all of a sudden you, 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 you are preparing uh, for the rebuild. Okay, because you don't go get him, you don't go get him any weapons when you go and get you a draft another quarterback. That's the one thing. The other thing that, that, that I wanted to, to comment on was, we didn't speak too much about the, NF, the NFC East. And you're absolutely right. I think McCarthy, uh, as, as a coach for the Dallas Cowboys, is going to take them to another level. He is a playoff caliber coach. You can get a team to a Super Bowl, and that team is loaded. But if you're not going to go with the Cowboys, where are you going to go? You cannot sit here and make me believe that the Washington franchise is ready, and you've got way too many holes left, in my opinion, with the, with the Eagles and with the Giants. They, they still got a lot of work to do there. As far as uh, the West is concerned, I, I, I can, I can kind of go with uh, San Fran, but I'm, you're not going to make me – Russell Wilson is proven. People forget that they missed winning that division by one play Preach. last year. Preach. One, one, Preach. one play Preach. No time left on the clock Preach. on the road. Preach. So that team right there is do not. That's the one you can't sleep on. That's the one you can't sleep on. That's the division. And, 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 and one thing I got. I, I gotta say one thing. Okay. You cannot let me get out the NFC without saying one thing. Your Detroit Lions. Okay. Your Detroit Lions. You got to. You got to give me at least two seconds on this one. All right. But I'm going to surprise. Take your time, bro. Take your I time. Think, I I really do believe that they're going to be an improvement. I really do believe that we're going to be surprised as they improve. Yeah, four wins. <laughs> 79. <laughs> four wins. Four wins. As they uh, improve the 79, uh, enough to keep Matt Patricia's job, okay? That, that's the thing about it. He's going to keep his job with a 79 team because it was better than what they were last year. All right. Hammer, you on the clock. What, who are your four divisional winners in the NFC? NFC, uh, Definitely uh, Philly. Uh, McCarthy's an idiot. That's why he got fired from Green Bay. And uh, the bottom line is that, um, you know, why are you going – first of all, the most public decision, why you keep Clemens if you're offensive mind? Uh, you bring in Mike Nolan, who's a, who's a, who's a has-been, as a defensive coordinator. Your defense is whack. Defense is garbage. And, and so – and you got uh, well, don't talk office. about don't talk about Dallas. They should have got, got a defensive guy. Tell me why you got a defensive guy. She got, got, defensive guy. She got maybe Todd Bowles, something like that. Who, some why, defensive why side of the ball. <laughs> because I believe in Philly. I believe in Doug Peterson. I believe in oh. Carson Wentz. Oh. I believe I don't believe in Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy is one of the worst coaches in the NFL. And, and he's he's selling wolf tickets. And so you're gonna see that he's gonna be one and done. And I ain't talking about good as far as I'm talking about one as far as not for long because they're going to see his inadequacy. You gave me no evidence ball. on Philly. Like, if I'm oh, listening to you, I, I hear nothing on Philly that makes it irrational. Carson Wentz, no Carson Wentz, no Oh, the gap between Carson Wentz and Dak Prescott that big. Yeah, that is not that big of a game. Their defense is right, better. Go, go to your next division. Defense. I'm not believing that one. I'm not believing one. Go to your next I got division. Seattle. I got Seattle. I think uh, I like Jamal that, Williams is going to be neutralized. I got Seattle definitely. Uh, win that division. Uh, no question. Um, was it as far as the North? I already said I had uh, uh, Minnesota. And then uh, I got uh, who that? Don't trust Nations. the coach. What are you talking about? Uh, 
you don't trust uh, what? You don't trust uh, Carol in the box? Which, 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 no, no, Minnesota coach. Minnesota I coach. I trust him. I trust him. He, he, I think he's a defensive guy. He's driving guy. a Ferrari like it's a Model T. No, no, no. He got no. He, he, he drives a Ferrari like it's a Model T. He, That's he, why he, got, he got Kubiak he, there now, bro. Kubiak's gonna take over. Kubiak's gonna take over the offense. Like it's a Model T. Kubiak's taking right. over the offense, right. bro. Yo, he on the and, can't and trust the list. He's the first football coach on the can't trust the list. So those those are my four. Those are my four, definitely. Yeah. So you have Philly, Seattle, Minnesota, and who'd you have? Uh, Brady, Tampa Bay. Yeah, no, I got I got uh, who that, but Tampa Bay is gonna be uh, nipping at the heels. So you got New Orleans. Oh okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I got New Orleans, but they they're not gonna go anywhere. But they're gonna still right. they're gonna go anywhere. All right, all right. We, we, before we, I'm, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Hank go here so we can, we can see everybody's stuff on, on uh, get get them all on the table. So Hank, who are your divisional winners? Okay, my division of winners is the Minnesota Vikings. Okay, out of, out of the North, I'm taking the Dallas Cowboys. I, I I disagree with Hammer. I don't think McCarthy is an idiot. I think that Aaron Rodgers is a diva. All right, so I think that uh, the Dallas Cowboys they're just too talented. And with Garrett, you know, as their coach, you know, he was such a bad coach that anything is going to be an improvement. Okay, over in the West, I'm taking Seattle. I'm taking the Seahawks. I just think that. Uh, again, that 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 came right down to it. In the South, I don't trust Drew Brees. I, mm-hmm. People fail to realize that um, um, that they was playing better. What I can't his name just just dropped right out of my head. Um, uh, Teddy Bridgewater. They were Teddy undefeated Bridgewater. with Teddy Thank Bridgewater. Teddy, undefeated. Teddy, Teddy, undefeated. Teddy, undefeated. They was getting it in with Teddy Bridgewater. Preach okay. it. Preach it. Preach it. Preach it. With Teddy Bridgewater. It was getting in with Taysom Hill. The preaching, okay, were, preaching, was, preaching. But what happened was you brought back Drew Brees and all of a sudden it became very predictable. I expect that again this year. What I, but what folks are failing to realize is what's going on down in Tampa Bay. And the fact that uh, the reason why Tom Brady was brought in was not to be the Messiah, but was to, come, was, but was to eliminate mistakes. Okay, mm-hmm. that, that you, that he wasn't brought in there to do nothing but eliminate some of the mistakes that Unfortunately, Jameis Winston was making. Yeah, defensive okay, player of the year, Jameis Winston. You know, you know, he he just, you know, what do you say? The defensive player of the year, Jameis. Yeah, Jameson, right. I mean, Jameson, I mean, I mean he, he he went to go get glasses, and he could have wore full pair. But you know, you can't throw six touchdown passes and six interceptions in a game. You just can't do it. So this is so. Let's watch watch out for this thing. I'm picking Tampa Bay simply because I think that with Arians and with uh, Brady. And, and and there's 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 some flimsy that's going on with the, with the Falcons. I don't trust them, and I don't trust uh, Carolina right now. And right and again, I believe uh, New Orleans is going to be predictable. So I'm looking for a bounce from the Buccaneers this year. And that's not just a Michigan pick. It's just that I just I just from what I've seen. <laughs> wow. So it, it it looks like I mean, so when I look at this, I mean I think I mean. A couple of these are tough to argue because Seattle, I mean, Seattle is – Russell Wilson is great. The 49ers, I think, have done some, you know – I don't trust their coach. But, yeah. again, I think yeah. after, after the Super Bowl, he's got some issues. But, I mean, regular Super season, they, they – Two they, Super Bowls. Yeah, but, I mean, but he's got there. So, you know, we're talking, we, we talking about division. That's like the Buffalo Bills got there. So well, what? We're talking about divisional winners. So, he, he somehow figures out how to win divisions. He wins yeah. – so we got there yet. Um, and then what's happening in the South? Uh, you know, that's going to be interesting because um, that's a division that's always has surprises every once in a while. You know, and, you know, I can't trust the Falcons, but I wouldn't be surprised if they put something together. You know, it's, it's just interesting enough to, you know, affect the way that division is going to go. Um, I, I agree, Brady, uh, when you look at their defense down the stretch in Tampa Bay, um, you know, uh, they they played well. Brady being able to take care of the ball, just get the ball to the weapons, going to be interesting. You know, and then, you know, I, I know you're down on Drew Brees, but, you know, uh, they won a lot of games down there in New Orleans. So it, I think, you know, all y'all got y'all good positions, and we're going to see how that how that, how that that all comes out and uh, what's going to happen here uh, uh, as we move forward. But I, I, I like that pick. I, I just got to have, you know, Minnesota has been a promise there. There's been a promise in Minnesota for years. And somehow they just managed to mess it up. They got Kubiak <laughs> now. They're going to lose the game in. at Chicago. They're going to get in with Kubiak. They'll fall Trust here. They'll, they'll, they'll lose. No. They do Kubiak something get in. because they're afraid to open up the engine. 
And and Kubiak's gonna open up the engine. He's gonna they turn drive, over. The, they drive and miss Daisy. No, and that's no, part of the problem over no, there. No, I mean, no. They, you got you got thoroughbreds to the point where the receivers no. had to go to the media. And, and really, what they was because the, the only person they could jump on is the quarterback. Because that's they, why I got Kubiak, man. They got Kubiak was, for a reason. They, uh, well, we'll see. We'll see. No, we, we definitely see. He didn't come out of bad health. He got. He came to get it in as an OC, bro. Yeah, that's, but he that's ain't why the head he coach. Back. He the whole C, but he ain't the head coach. Mike Zimmer ain't stupid. He's on the clock, man. If he don't win, he gone. So he gonna definitely turn the offense to Kubiak. Watch. You can't. It's it's like it's like saying Tom Thibodeau is all of a sudden gonna open up the offense. You can't make them do what they don't know how to do. He like he's a Tom Thibodeau. He's a Thibodeau of. Wait a of uh, I got one thing to say he, about that. He's a, he's a Thibodeau of of football. Wait a minute. I have one thing to say. But huh? Go ahead. Weren't we saying this last year with Ed Orgeron? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I wasn't the show, but yeah, no, I saw him play. I was, uh, and then Jamar Chase. Speaking of Orgeron, Jamar Chase broke people's hearts today, didn't he? Damn. Yeah, he did. Yeah, but I don't blame the brother, man. Shoot, get your Shoot. money. Yeah, get, 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 get your money. Don't be following all that stuff. But so the NFC is set with y'all. The NFC is set. You uh, go to AC, FC or what? I got, I got something to say. Mm-hmm. Y'all, y'all uh, got me between the rock and the hard place because I have two, two former teammates of mine that are in the are in the NFL today. Okay. And what two teams do they play for? Minnesota oh, Vikings, Minnesota and Vikings, the right, right. Seahawks. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't pick either one of them. Everybody else in the panel picked them. Well, hey, it, it, it'll be good. But you, but I will say this: you like you in a witness protection program, so they're not going to be able to locate you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, brother, the lighting don't mess up over here. You got, what's going on over there? Uh, the sun is coming you down. Those picks, so any, anyone have, you want to be identified? Sun, it's the same sun I got. They can see me. <laughs> I don't yeah. know what's going on over what, there. What are you part vampire over there? <laughs> no, on? no. You like you come you come out, like the movies like when you try to go through and all of a sudden the, the killer comes out of the darkness into the screen. You like ah! that's how you come all of a sudden. Uh, I talk about man, it's it's coronavirus now. He didn't pay a light bill. That's what's up. Yeah, I don't know what's going on over there. <laughs> he didn't pay a light bill. That's you what's up. Like. You get that thirty dollars. Hey, 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 we hey. low budget, but we ain't that low budget. I'm gonna send you some lights. All right. AFC, we're going to go back. We're going to start. We're going to go the other way. we go to Hank. We're going to start with the AFC, your division of winners. Who do you think going to win the division? Of, uh, okay, I, I'm going to start with the AFC South, and I'm going right with the Houston Texans. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm not got, uh, the, my, my boy Deshaun Watson, I think he's on a mission. Okay, now again, and he's got one of them can't trust the coaches too. <laughs> don't, get, don't, don't get it twisted. He's right? one on the list. He, 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 look here, look here. He, he, he puts the buff in buffoon. Okay, so, 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 so that's all I can tell you. That's all I can tell you. So, so, but, but, but I think that he's got enough talent for them to get through that. Watch out for Indianapolis. Watch out for the Colts. I think that they, they made some nice moves that's going to really uh, turn some heads over there. Okay, let's go now to the, to the uh, AFC East. That's going to finally be a um, competitive division this year, okay? Because we, we got to see if Cam can get it done for the Patriots. But if that's going to be a competitive division. Again, I would like to say that the Bills is about to make a move, but I don't trust their quarterback. I don't trust their quarterback. But I'm going to really fly out the box with this move, okay? I'm going to go with um, the uh, Miami Dolphins. Mm. I'm going to say the Miami Dolphins because I think they made enough moves to – which I think is going to be probably the most wide-open division in, in the AFC this year is going to be the East, okay? Um, AFC North, um, I, listen, uh, that's, that's a tough one for me. You know, you got um, – if, if, if I got it right, um, you, got, uh, you got Baltimore and you got Pittsburgh. I know you're going with your Steelers, right? Um, yeah, it's but, gonna be a uh, tough one, but I'm gonna go. I, I think they're gonna make a bounce back. But them Ravens, I, I, it's gonna be tough no to go. With this. I hate to say, but, it, see, Ravens, but, 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 but again, um, I think that 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 this is a coach that I do trust, John Harbaugh. Okay, because he turned he he actually turned Lamar Jackson into the star, and if you think me about, I think he's going to be. So I'm going to I'm going to stick with 
um, with, with, with the Ravens until further notice there. And I'm going with the Super Bowl champs out west. I mean, that's just, that's just ridiculous. Pat Mahomes is, is – is, that's, that's Midwest showtime. All right, and they did some nice stuff, especially for their defense this year. All right, and they got him some more weapons. So, uh, but 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 look out for the look out for the Las Vegas Raiders. They're going to be fun preach, to watch. Preach, preach. They're going to be fun to watch. I'm going to tell you this: they got a beautiful okay, they, stadium. I just I, I drove past the stadium uh, a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. That stadium is beautiful, black, beautiful. Like the stadium you drove by. Yeah. Like oh, I the pictures Man, of I'm, it. I'm like, I know y'all moved to Vegas. Yeah. That stadium is unbelievable. Yeah, and they're gonna look here, and 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 they're gonna be a force out there. They're gonna be a force out there. They're, mm -hmm. they're going they're going to upset a lot of cats out there. But uh, uh, but I, and until further notice, you know, the Chiefs, um, they 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 they're they're the team to beat right now. They're the team to beat, and as long as Patrick Mahomes is able to sling it from anywhere. That's what I'm going with. So you got Houston, Miami, Baltimore, and Kansas City. All right. Hammer, who, who do you have as your divisional winners in the AFC? Definitely Buffalo in the East. Um, you know, I trust Sean McDermott, and also I trust the fact they got Stephon Diggs. And I trust Josh Allen. Josh Allen's a raw talent. He needs some weapons around. He's got a can of arm, and he can run. I think Josh Allen's one of the most improved players in, in the league this year with with uh, Stephon Diggs and with um, uh, uh, what's the name of uh, the, the, uh, the OC was at uh, Alabama, um, I was gonna help him out a lot. So um, as far as the North, I go with uh, B more. Um, I'll be, I'll be bummed. I think I think Rosberg is washed up, man. I think he's gonna show that elbow injury is serious, and um, he's talking by as such, and so. He's one hit away. Plus, I don't think he's gonna be able to get I'm to. Le and that's, over see, I'm less concerned about Ro uh, Roethlisberger. I'm like concerned about who the number one receiver is going to be. Well, you're right. That, that's a problem I mean, too. To you me, got, that's just Juju, it's less yeah, about yeah. him. I think they got a running game. Well, but he, he got to get. Their receiving get, core is not to me. Con I'm not confident. Yeah, but I'm not confident in him either. I just think he's hurt. I think he's. I think he's hurt, and I think they got nothing behind him. They should have drafted. And then. Um, you got uh, the South. Uh, no, nah, uh, Bill O'Brien, you talk about an idiot. He's the biggest idiot in the NFL. So I'm going definitely with uh, my man Mike Vrabel and the Tennessee Titans. They paid my man um, Derrick Henry. And, and uh, you only got a sample of Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill is going to get it in next year. And so A.J. Brown is going to get it in next year. Uh, so they got some receivers, man. They got they got some talent on them. And so I like the Titans all day. Um, and then finally, yeah, Patrick Mahomes, no doubt about it. But like you, like we said, do not sleep on the Las Vegas Raiders because Derek Carr is going to light up because getting Mario, it was the best thing for him. It's going to light a fire. And I, I've seen him have on that word. He is geeked. He is hyped up. I mean, he's he literally like, I see him. He's going to jump to the screen back. The dude is ready to ball, man. And so he's ready to show because Gruden's dissed him, I don't know how many times, and 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 threatened him to get a uh, quarterback. And they got Mariota, who's not going to be in competition. But Derek Carr is going to get it in. They believe he's going to get it in. All right. Thank you. This is good stuff. Okay, we're going to go with Darnell. Somewhere in the Midwest, located <laughs> in the cave, in the Midwest, we have Darnell man. Kirkland. Jr. Oh, man. Somewhere he will appear oh, on your screen. Don't jump. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all still hear me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, You're going to put a lamp in front of your monitor. It'll shine on your face. Let's. We're doing some education here on the – this is what we do on – see, when, in five years when we're – have our own see now you look like get out we <laughs> were, see now they gonna say you know they used to call now he's looking like night. scream now they gonna say yeah no, you like scream it's like now you looking like scream you, 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 okay, you, from you have a, you have a light you have a light in your room you haven't turned on like your overhead light no there is no overhead light in here you have a lamp in front of your monitor Sorry, y'all. We have to do these things. The call came from inside the house. Is there a lamp you can put in front of them? <laughs> like, <laughs> this is bad times with uh, I have some bad times with uh, this is a bad, I some bad times with uh, with the light and stuff, but you know, I'm good. This lamp go way up here. You need to get that lamp a little farther down there. 
but we're gonna work on it. Just lean forward. Just lean <laughs> close to us. So we at least get to the All right. So um, <laughs> I asked you more. <laughs> this is this is a low budget radio. This is podcast. This is how we get down, y'all. RSG. But see, we don't care because he's still gonna. Mm. This is how bad this young man is. No, he was like Mayor turned out the lights. That's what happened. He turned out the lights, didn't he? He's still gonna he's still gonna bring it. So who you got, man? We're gonna work with you. <laughs> Does that help any? No. <laughs> who you got? Who you got, uh, man? Who you got? So for the AFC North, I'm going with Baltimore. Uh, Baltimore. I think they're gonna uh, repeat because uh they have a like I said with the San Francisco, they have a game plan. They have a great offensive line led by Ronnie Stanley. They have Mark Ingram. He's a um, real culture setter in the locker room. They have Lamar Jackson, the reigning MVP of the league. They have um, – they got rid of Errol Thomas, but let's see what that does to the locker room. I think um, – um, I think it will end up helping the team chemistry out. Mm-hmm. Get that um, – Sometimes you have addition by subtraction. I think um, that um, that could keep the uh, – because they, they really don't have to do too much improving, even though they will, because they are they have a young core, so they're going to improve. But um, I feel like they're at a level where they can beat out the rest of the team, especially with um, Cleveland. They lost Grant Delpit the other day. He tore his Achilles. Yep. Um, used to wear – Ba- Baker Mayfield is still a question mark. Uh, we don't know if Ben Roethlisberger is going to be healthy. I mean, it's I, I think it's the Baltimore's division to to lose. But with the AFC East now, this is where you have to toss up because without Tom Brady there, Buffalo on paper, you think Buffalo should win because everybody – and their mama from New England is opting out of the season, it looks like they want to lose. But you never know. When you have Bill Belichick over there, um, you know, at the, he- at the helm, I think you might end up seeing them repeat again as the divisional champions. But I'm going Buffalo because I think they, they should get it done, right? But um, AFT South, Tennessee. Um, I like what Indianapolis is doing. I really like their team. Quentin Nelson, their offensive line is amazing. They got Marlon Mack, one of my favorite backs in the whole league. Marlon Mack, they picked up Jonathan Taylor. That's all their running game should be top notch. Not to mention they have T.Y. Hilton still, and they picked up Michael Pittman from um, USC. So mm-hmm. as long as Phillip Rivers comes to play, they're all – He ain't coming to play. That's the problem. <laughs> Hey, as long as he comes to play, they he ain't coming play. to play. That's the problem. Jacoby will take over by half season, hopefully. So, yeah, get Jacoby wrong, man. Phillip Rivers is done. I saw, I saw him play live against the Bears. He's pitiful, dude. He's pitiful. <laughs> he's pitiful, man. I mean, well, he's, he's he's pitiful. So all we have left is AFC West. AFC West, I believe, right? I went to yep. North, yeah, East, South. So now you just got the West and. I think this should be a no-brainer. The Kansas City Chiefs will repeat because they just have way too much. <laughs> just when you find the offense couldn't get any better, you have um, Tyreek Hill, you have um, Travis Kelsey, you have the offensive line there, you have um, a decent. You had a decent running back before, but Hilaire. now, yeah, that was Talair, brother. Now you add Clyde Edwards Talair from LA. Break it down. He is, he is the definition of an all-purpose back. He can mm-hmm. catch the ball out the backfield. He can, he could, he's a magician down there. He can, he can, he can make something out of nothing, and that is really important in the NFL because um, sometimes you might have um, a defender um, that brings penetration, and you can't get pushed on the off of the line. But he can, he can turn that one-yard loss into a two-yard gain. And that's something special. And he can also um, break one big, even though he doesn't really look like a burner. He's not necessarily a burner, but he can make you miss an open field. And he's really tough to tackle. We have one of those little backs that's real strong, but they're low to the ground, have a low center of gravity. Nobody wants to bring them down one-on-one. So he just brings a whole different dimension to their offense. And I think it's going to be a long shot to, to, to take them out. All 
right, Darnell, I'm going to keep you going with this one. You got flow going. Uh, so you got your divisional. We got the divisional people set. Before we go back to say who, who are you going to have in the conference championship um, and, and, and then eventually your Super Bowl matchups, I, who uh, – talk about a player that you think in the NFL overall, you know, now that you kind of look at these divisions, who you think might be kind of have an outbreak this year and also a team that you think might over-deliver. You didn't – you may not have called them to be your divisional winner, but you think this team – if there's one team that might knock and mess up your your list, this is the one team that nobody's talking about that could could, could do it. So, one player you think is going to break out this year, and then uh, a team that you think might over deliver based on how people the preseason uh, kind of evaluation folks have given. So these two teams go hand in hand. Mm. Uh, my my breakout player is Courtland Sutton. Um, he is an unsung hero for the Denver Broncos. The wide receiver that he can – he is a great route runner. He really he really can get separation. He has um, good hands. He um, is a guy, I believe, um, especially with the talent that's around him. You added Jerry Judy to the team. You added K.J. Hammer to the team. They're going to have a lot of weapons. So, um, I say Cortland Sutton, he's going to take a leap this year. And um, if Drew Locke can take that next step, as a quarterback, I think Denver can be one of those teams that you look at and it's like, where did Denver come from? But they have speed. You know, um, the new trend in, the, in, in football, I was going to say NFL, but this is football all the way around in all levels. It's just having guys in space and creating matchups. And you have a team with um, Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton. You have um, K.J. Hamler. I mean, you. About Melvin Gordon, give Melvin going, Gordon. Going to be, oh, yeah, Melvin Gordon running out the backfield. You, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a tough team to stop if they, if they can get clicking. Thank you for sharing. I knew you was. I was rolling. I, I just kept you was. I was feeding. You. I was like you, like Benny Johnson. I was like, let me give it back to him. <laughs> All right, Hammer. Uh, who, who's, uh, who, who's an outbreak? Uh, a player that might gonna have an outbreak uh, this year, and, and uh, a team that you think will over deliver and could mess up things for everybody. I think, uh, like I said, Josh Allen, I think the Stephon Diggs acquisition was tremendous. And uh, Brian Dabble, if you got a name right, is going to bring it as well. I think Josh Allen is going to be a great improved player. He, already, he can run. If he stops running as much as he did and pass the ball, he's got a cannon. Uh, he just needs to be accurate and he needs weapons. He's got that. And so with Singletary as well, the backfield, I like him. I think he's going to be a breakout. I, I like him. He came out of school except for – you know, obviously his, his tweets were problemsome, but, uh, you know, and then uh, definitely the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, I think that Gruden's building a culture there, uh, culture of accountability, uh, culture of excellence. And I think Derek Carr is my runner. He's going to really get in because, you know, Gruden's, Gruden's put him on, on, on blast. I mean, he's, he's questioned him. He's challenged him. That's, what, that's why Gruden is Gruden. Again, Derek Carr needed to be challenged. Derek Carr was being passive. He got paid. And he got soft. But they brought in Mariota. And Mariota's talented, but doesn't execute well. But it's going to be enough to light it up. And you, like I said, you can see him on that where he is hyped up. He's like, they doubt me, bring it. That's what he's saying. And that's the thing about it. Bring it. And, he, and, and don't count out, like I said, David Carr might get beat up uh, – but David Carr is a great QB coach to, to be in your family as far as uh, unpaid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's, what, that's what's up. Wow. Okay. All right. All right, Hank, who 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 you think you going to have an outbreak as a player this year? And then uh, which team is going to over-deliver? You know, I think that, you know, I'm, and I'm surprised Hammer really didn't go back to this, but I think Ryan Tannehill, I think, you know, as a as a as a, as a breakout player because of how it kind of transpired last year with um, Tennessee, it was almost like Derrick Henry found his his way in the playoffs. But I think Tanny Hill kind of kind of was just he 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 was that glue that kept that together. And I think that you know that he is that type of player that with a full season with the, with the, with Tennessee and especially. Uh, with some of you picking them to win the division, will be that breakout player, and he and he will be that glue that keeps that offense together. I think the team nobody's really talking about. 
that's got talent and we really haven't uh, talk, talked about is the Washington franchise. They drafted well. Uh, you've got a pretty much a wide, you've got kind of like Dallas and everybody else, and, and I know Hammer picked Philly. But that team, I, again, I think Gruden was a, was was another uh, coach that that put the buff in buffoon, but uh, uh, Jay Gruden. But I think that that team has got a lot of talent. I thought they drafted very well. I think they're going to break a few hearts as far as uh, the, the teams. Like look look at what they're doing. Um, and and so that's a team that I, I'm keeping an eye on. It's going to be interesting to see if they can really. Um, you know, put it together. But I do want to mention one other thing that is almost an unsung piece. We really haven't talked about it too much, which I think is the one thing you need to keep an eye out for is the COVID scare. And what will COVID do to the NFL? Uh, and, and and while, you know, we're, we're all excited about, you know, that they, they look like we're going to do it, but what what will that, how will that impact this sport? You know, so that's the one other thing that we that we got to keep an eye out for, and 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 how does the NFL handle that? All right, so this is what I'm going to do, because uh, I I want to let this marinate for a little bit. I thought about having y'all make y'all announcements, but this is too early. Not for me. We got, we got a couple of weeks before the season starts. Not for me. Y'all y'all got your divisional winners already. I, I'm thinking about. Teasing the audience a little bit and have okay. you come back. This is I'm on your show, so you tell us what to do, bro. Come back with y'all playoff teams, your divisional champions, right? Because you have to get a wild card. Um, and and then we'll do a Super Bowl. I, I want to do that on the next podcast because y'all 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 hit me on some good stuff here, and I want to make sure that I'm gonna let it marinate. We're gonna post these divisional winners. We're gonna get this right. We get it marinated, but then we're gonna have y'all. Hit your, your your playoff teams because you got some wild card folks in there, and then we're gonna hit them. We're gonna hit them conference champions, and then we're gonna hit them Super Bowl champions. So we're gonna, we'll we'll do that next week because I, I feel like I want to let the people wait. I was gonna give it to them tonight, but y'all hit me with so much good stuff today that I want to have y'all come back. And I also want the people. You talking about Alvin? You know, I want to see. I want people to see Darnell when he make his picks. <laughs> like we are shorting the audience a little bit. You know, he and there like Lil Seymour from up <laughs> like, let's do it again. We about to we about to, we about to, we about to put a GoFundMe in place so he gets some lights in that house. Uh, he about, he about, he about, he getting, he in the club right now. He about to get in the club. I feel like I want to see Club, Kirkland. Club, Club Kirkland. Kirkland. Club Kirkland. He be in Club Kirkland right now. That's what he I, I, I feel like I feel like we want them to see you when you say it. Uh, and so we want to make sure that's set. So I'm gonna hold off on that because. The stuff y'all brought to me today, I'm like, ah, I'm going to wait. Because I love to be able to have y'all let this marinate. I'm going to let y'all sleep on it. And then we'll come back. I'm a, I'm a, we're going to list these teams again. And then we're going we're gonna to talk about who your playoff teams are, NFC, AFC, your champions, your Super Bowl picks. We're going to we're gonna get the game set. I, I'm, I'm just making that executive decision because I gave a lot of good stuff. I don't want to give everybody everything. I want them to come back and hear y'all stuff as y'all drop it. A, a little bit uh, as well. So we're going we gonna to stop there. So for next week, for our next podcast, these guys will give you their playoff teams. You already got the divisional champions. They got some wild card people they got to put in there. They're going to give you your conference champions. They're going to give you your Super Bowl champions. Now you see a theme going on with them already uh, with a couple teams. But, you know, they got, they're going to have a little time on this before they get the next one. They might come back changing their mind. They might be coming back like, I apologize. COVID, <laughs> shit, something might happen over the next week that make make somebody's feet get a little wet. Now, I don't know if I can go with that team now, but we'll we'll be able to give it. We'll give it a little time to marinate a little bit. Okay, so that's what we'll be doing next podcast, along with some other things. So stick with us on this. Thank y'all guys for for doing it. This is why I call y'all our expert panel. Y'all brought a lot of good stuff to this. Uh, we're gonna hit to my man Hank because he's back in the business to drop the mic for us. Thank you. You know, but I, I've got to say this, you know, we got the youngin over there in the far corner. He looked like he protesting. Black dark matters. That's all I can say. That's what it looks like to me. Black dark matters. Because like, he's got it going on. <laughs> but I want to be serious for a few moments if I could. Uh, the other day we lost uh, 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 a young icon in Chadwick Boseman. 
Um, he plays the obviously all you know he played Black Panther in the Marvel movies. A uh, young man died of colon cancer, uh, and the, and the thing about it is he had been battling this for four years, and no one knew about it. I want to say to all the brothers out there, you know, and, and sisters, go get checked. I know that's something. I know it's not the most. If you if you're of age, go get checked. Uh, and have your colonoscopies when your doctors tell you to. I know it's not the most pleasant thing to prepare for, but you always want to get yourself right. Um, the thing about Chadwick Boseman was because he was such a, a philanthropist of his own, right? He, he cared about people. Uh, he worked while he was sick. Nobody knew anything about it. And he played some of the most historic figures uh, in, in the movies. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he played Black Panther. He mm -hmm. played James Brown. Mm -hmm. He played Jackie Robinson. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, when he passed away, he passed away on Jackie Robinson Day. And the thing about that is this young man was 43 years old when he died. 43 years old. And, and what that did was I, I started doing some research and it dawned on me, my God, that Jackie Robinson broke into the major leagues 73 years ago. Folks, that's not that old. That's not that long ago. There's some folks that's still around that can tell you that was probably at the game. I'm not one of them, but can probably tell you that that game was at that game when Jackie Robinson played. I can go and talk to my mom, who's 84 years old, who um, would say that her dad, my grandfather, would sit there by the radio and became a Brooklyn Dodgers fan down in Chattanooga, Tennessee. You had black folk all over the world that was that was that was tuning in because of this great feat of what Jackie Robinson did, and so it, it, it ties it all together. And we are dealing with some of the same racial unrest and stresses that poor Jackie Robinson dealt with 73 years ago. And it was it was so apropos that at, at, at the shooting that happened in Wisconsin, that all of the major leaguers had on their number 42 jerseys and chose not to play that day. You know, we need to really stop. We need to take a pause. And there's sometimes that, uh, that, that sport sometimes imitates life so much that we see that, that, that such a, a character of a Chadwick Bosman, you know, passes away on Jackie Robinson Day in America in 2020. And that we need to just stop and take a pause. That the history is, 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 is still happening that these things are still happening and that we, the, we have a long way to go, mm -hmm. but 73 years is not that long. Not that long at all. This thing right here is for my people in the streets. Yes, 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 today.